stand by government of Turkey. As of this moment, Turkey's cooperation with us in our counterterrorism efforts, in our NATO obligations, and in our regional efforts with respect to Syria and ISIS have not been affected negatively. All of that has continued as before. That was U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in Luxembourg commenting on the attempted coup in Turkey. But what was what he said true? Is Turkey really a loyal NATO ally? They shut down ingress and egress to the NATO military base in, in Sirlik and actually shut the power off. Are they really an ally against the Islamic State? Or do they actually support it against, uh, against their enemies, including the Kurds, and do business with the Islamic State? And can they possibly be part of the Western family of nations when they move towards Islamism and away from freedom. Well, joining us now via Skype is our friend Daniel Pipes, the president of the Middle East Forum, who wrote a very provocative column saying he was rooting for the coup. And he joins us now. Daniel, good to see you. What do you make of John Kerry talking about President Erdogan as if he's a great ally of the United States, a man Barack Obama said is one of his most trusted counterparts around the world. Well, he said that a few years ago. He hasn't said that lately. Well, as we all know, diplomats are paid to lie for their country, and that's what John Kerry is doing in the United States and doing it well, I might add. Of course, as you point out, it's not true. Uh, the U.S. base in Turkey was effectively shut down. There was no power. They couldn't go in and out. They couldn't fly sorties. Uh, the tensions between the two governments, U.S. and Turkish, rife as the Turkish government and the person of its president has said that unless the U.S. government turned over a Turkish cleric by the name of Fethullah Gülen, then relations will go down the tubes. So things are not at all good, despite John Kerry's valiant effort to... Now, now you, mentioned, you mentioned Gülen, and he, uh, he's a Turkish cleric who was once friends or allies with Erdogan, but now he lives in Pennsylvania, of all places. And he is the great enemy that Erdogan blames for the coup, although, at least in public, Gulen said he opposed the coup, as did all the opposition parties. There's a theory circulating on the internet, and I don't want to give credence to conspiracy theories because there's so many of them, especially in the Middle East, that this coup was actually staged by Erdogan himself as an excuse to purge thousands of his enemies from the courts, from the media, from the army, from uh, political... Uh, I mean, he shut down more than 20 news websites. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if I believe that conspiracy theory, but he's certainly taking well advantage of the coup to conduct a Stalinist purge. Would you say that's an exaggeration? Uh, there are certainly many suspicious elements. For example, this list of thousands of individuals who were ripe for the taking as soon as, the, as soon as the coup effort ended. There are almost 3,000 judges and prosecutors who were fired immediately after it. The fact that F-16 airplanes, warplanes, had Erdogan locked in on the site, they didn't do anything about it. There are a lot of suspicious elements. However, like you, I'm inclined not to think it's a mistake. I'm inclined to think it's real. Mostly because it's just too big a, an episode. And the classic staged provocation was the Reichstag fire in Berlin in 1933 by Hitler. But a fire in one building is pretty easy to pull off. A massive coup effort like this across the country, I think it's too difficult. But it does appear that Erdogan is doing everything he possibly can to exploit this and to increase his power yet. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I, I want to talk about a couple of internal matters. Uh, the, the Kurds who want to have an independent Kurdistan that would incorporate part of northern Iraq. But there's large Kurdish areas in Turkey, and, and Erdogan has unleashed a military-style attack on Kurds within the Turkish borders. Here's, here's some cell phone video uh, purportedly taken by Kurds in Syria. Now, this looks like it could be... Sorry, in, I meant to say in Turkey. This looks like it could be bombed out Raqqa or something. But these are Kurds holding a white flag, basically saying, we surrender, don't shoot. And then there's Turkish tanks shooting at them. 
You can see they're running with the white flag. So, so Erdogan has internal enemies that he wants to purge. He also has external enemies. Let me show you one more video, Daniel, before I ask you to comment. This next video is when Turkey shot down a Russian fighter jet last year, and here is footage by terrorists or tur actually Turkish-linked Islamic groups in Syria rejoicing over what they uh, claim is the dead body of the Russian fighter jet. So you've got Kurds within, you've got Russians without, you've got plenty of enemies. Erdogan is in a bunker mentality to begin with, but he's acting out. Can this man stay as president long? Will he? Will there be another coup? Will he be assassinated? Or will he go on to worse things? It's been my thesis for some time that Erdogan is so successful domestically in Turkey through his belligerence and his aggressiveness that he thinks he's got the method that works everywhere at all times and is using the same bellicosity in international affairs. However, it's not working out so well there. He's just pointing out he's got British enemies, Russian enemies. One can go beyond that to Syrian enemy and Israeli so Chinese and whatnot. Recently, he has pulled back a bit. He reestablished relations with Israel and with Russia on the same day. He's aware he's gone too far. But his impulse in years is so aggressive. I think it's likely his rule will end because he takes a step that is too strong, too aggressive, internationally, not domestically, internationally. I wonder who uh, will push back. I mean, Vladimir Putin certainly uh, tightened the screws on Turkey after that jet was shot down. Uh, I, I don't see uh, pressure like that coming from the Obama carry side. I just don't see them pressuring any country in the world. Maybe it would come from Putin. I tell you, we're not uh, done hearing this incredible story. Last question to you, Daniel, before we let you go, and thank you for so much of your time. Uh, I've been riveted by the strange relationship between Turkey and Germany. Uh, not only has Turkey flooded Germany with millions of Syrian migrants that Erdogan basically turns the tap on and off at will, but Erdogan has bullied German politicians, arrested uh, or, or threatened to arrest Germans in Turkey, has pressed Angela Merkel to prosecute a comedian in Germany who was making fun of Erdogan. Like, Germany is really becoming, you know, is, is dancing to Erdogan's tune. Do you see that uh, German submission to Turkey changing in the wake of this attempted coup? Well, I would agree with everything you said, except let's say it's Merkel's submission rather than Germany's submission. There's a lot of anger in Germany uh, over what Merkel has done. And the symbol of it was, a couple of months ago, the German parliament, the Bundestag, passed a resolution calling the persecution of Armenians a century ago genocide. This is an extremely sensitive issue. And it was meant precisely to squirrel relations between Merkel and Erdogan. So there's building resentment, even in their own party, against this submissive approach by Merkel towards Erdogan. And one can see it more broadly in the population. There's anger. There's a lot of anger. And Merkel's paying a heavy price. Well, we'll see so, just how heavy that price gets. There are moves afoot to, for referenda. The uh, alternative for Deutschland party is growing. We'll see how that is. Daniel Pipes, great to see you. Thanks for t spending time with us. And by the way, folks, if you want to hang out with Daniel and me, and Raheel Raza, and Faith Goldie, and Sheila Gunn-Reed, and Paige McPherson. You gotta come on our Rebel Cruise. It's like a one-week convention on a boat. If you want more details, go to therebelcruise.ca. Daniel, it'll be great to see you there. Thanks for taking a week with us. You'll be a fan favorite, I know. I love the idea of a Rebel a rebel cruise. We just might invade Cuba if we get particularly rambunctious. Thanks, uh, Daniel. We'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.